Well, folks, today what we're up to is we're down here at the little, our little shooting range, and uh, I'm going to sight in the 6.5 Creedmoor, the Brandon X bolt. I've had this gun for a couple of years, and I'm just not getting around to sighting it in. Uh, there'll be a link at the end of this video, and I'll try to remember to put it in the description for where I mounted this loophole VX Freedom 4x12x50 CDS scope. And I used the uh, DNZ one piece aluminum mount. Uh, you might want to look at that if you're interested in this gun and this setup. Uh, I'm going to be shooting the Hornady Precision Hunter. Uh, the ELDX, 143 grain. 143 grain Precision Hunters. That's what we're getting ready to sight this thing in with. Loophole suggests that you sight in at either 50 or 100 yards. So I'm doing 50 because I can't get a 100 yard shot here. Um, I probably could, but the bush hog would have to be involved. <laughs> so we're going to go with 50. Um, so after I get it sighted in this afternoon, I'm going to go on their website and I'm going to put in my information, most of which will come from right here off of the box of bullets. Uh, muzzle velocity and all that kind of stuff. It's not absolutely necessary for you to use a chrono to do this. If you're going to be an extreme long range shooter, that type of thing, yes, you probably should. But for deer hunting, uh, this should be good enough. They have a plus or minus for the temperature. I'll put in deer walking right there. So anyway, back to the information you put in on the website. You put in the muzzle velocity and uh, a couple of other pieces of information, all of which is right here on the, bo on the box. Um, and also you have to put in your temperature, which for me, I'll probably put in uh, 55 degrees. The reason being that it's, it's a plus or minus 20 degrees. So that would give me down to 35, which that's actually rare around here during deer season for it to get that cold. It does occasionally. Uh, but it also would give me up to 85 degrees which if I was to go somewhere during deer season it'd be rare for it to be that hot so that's a pretty good mean temperature for me to use here 55 degrees and that, for my elevation I'll put in 2,000 feet because it is plus or minus 2,000 feet on the elevation so most of the time around here here in Brunswick County North Carolina um, I'm usually going to be <laughs> between 20 and 35 feet. So 2,000 feet gets me down to zero and it also gets me up to 4,000 feet. So there, there's my mean elevation there. So that, that'll be the way I, I plug it in. And then they will custom engrave me a dial for my turret here. And instead of it having graduations on it, like it has now like which is just like all your scopes uh, in minutes of angle instead of it having increments in minutes of angle it have anchor it'll have increments in yardage so in other words once I put that new dial on the gun which has already been sighted in all I'll have to do is drop it on and I'm already set at zero so if I want to shoot a shot at 350 yards, I'll just dial it up to 3.5 and I'm dead on. So I think it said on the website that the 6.5 Creedmoor, the, the, uh, with this ELDX bullet, if I'm not mistaken, it said that uh, the dial, when it comes back, will have increments all the way up to 1,100 yards. So. That's way beyond what I'm going to shoot. 
I mean, I can just imagine trying to shoot a whitetail at 1,100 yards. The crosshairs will probably cover him up. Probably. Um, of course, that's a pretty good scope, 4 by 12 by 50. Uh, generally, I'm a bushnell man, but I wanted that loophole because I mean, I'm a firm believer in loophole. American made everything. Um, but this is a gun that's capable of longer ranges, and so what I wanted is I wanted that CDS scope so that I can just dial the yardage. Only thing I'll have to do is take my trusty new loophole rangefinder, range the animal, and then dial it in right on the, right on top of the gun. So I got a, the new loophole RX 1400i TBRW digital laser rangefinder which I picked up I have an old Simmons that was get my son gave me for my birthday many years ago the problem with and it's been a great little rangefinder for bow hunting and everything but the problem with it is when I switch over and start shooting with a gun I, I'm lucky if I can get it to range deer past about 120 yards <coughs> this will range a deer to 900 yards it'll range a tree to 1200 and it'll range a reflective target out to 1400 so I shouldn't have any issues with this plus you can it has the technology for uh, to be able to plug in the information for my arrows so that I can use this to see if there's a limb or something between me and the, my intended target that my arrow flight might would hit. So that's a good little range finder. So we'll see how that works out. So that's the plan. We're gonna go up here and we're gonna put the target in place. I've already laser bore sighted the, the gun when I mounted the scope. So that's been work that usually works out really good for me. So we should be able to do a one shot zero. Uh, in other words I'll take one shot I'll adjust the scope to the shot and I should be in there probably end up making a couple of fine tune because I want it I want it dead on uh, I don't want it just close like I would do like I would do a slug gun or something like that I want it as close as I can make it shoot here at 50 yards so that it's as accurate as it can be so that when I get that new custom cut dial to go on top of it I'm in business and, uh, and hopefully once I get that back, what I'll do is I will uh, take you guys through the process of installing it and we'll try to take it out someplace and make a couple of longer range shots, maybe three or four hundred yards, and see if it's doing what it's supposed to do. So uh, that's what we're up to today. You guys keep watching and uh, maybe, you'll see, maybe you'll learn something, maybe you'll see something that's interesting. All right, let's see if we can be on the paper with the first shot. Well, that looks to me like from here, I think we're about a foot low, three or four inches to the right. But I'm going to walk down here and check to be sure.
All right, so I messed that up. Alright, so, I had to take a second shot, reason being, not paying attention, this cap, you only have a cap on this scope on your windage about knob, it doesn't have a cap on the top, um, and I just reached up here thinking I was going to unscrew the cap and so I turned it and got off of the previous set and so I took another shot. And now I'll adjust to that shot, which I turned it a little bit, brought it up quite a bit. Um, so I'll put the crosshairs back on zero, and I'll re and I'll adjust. Now I'll make the adjustment to to get the gun sighted into the shot. We're adjusted to the hole. <clears throat> so now we'll take another shot. We'll get back on the get across there back on the center of the target. We're about an inch to the right. Just about an inch. Uh, cracky, I think that might be it. That was a little bit too far.
okay so these are our results that was we're gonna call this shot number one even though it was number two after my little mess up so shot number one shot number two and then the next five shots were right there that's smaller than a quarter maybe a little bigger than a nickel five shots turn there every one of them touch one. these were touching each other these three shots then I made a little adjustment and it, and it moved a little bit and I got these two touching here so I don't think I can ask for any better than that so the next thing that I'll do is this will be taken off and I'll turn it around to zero and then put it back in place so anyway I appreciate you guys watching the video all of my videos if you're not subscribed how about hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications and uh, when I bring out the next video uh, you know when I get the custom dial in and we install that and take it to the, out to the, somewhere and make a longer range shot with a gun and see how it works you guys will be right there with me so uh, I really appreciate you guys following along and watching the, watching the videos and uh, whether you're subscribed or not I really appreciate it and I hope you'll continue to watch them and uh, maybe share them with somebody make a comment leave leave a comment for me hit that thumbs up button please hit that thumbs up button and uh, I really appreciate it and until I see you in the next one there you go